In fashion, just like in life, you've got to have friends. I think it's pretty obvious who the most important people to a fashion house are. It's obviously the designers who make the clothes that we see and buy and love. But around those designers, there is a whole horde of other people who contribute uh, in, in very many ways. Sometimes being a shoulder to cry on, sometimes being, uh, you know, a pat on the back. I always think of fashion design as kind of like making a movie. Uh, a, a movie isn't just about the star or the director. A movie is about all the other people who make the sound and the, the vision happen. And it is the same in fashion. They're the, the people who surround the designer, protect the designer, support the designer. I would imagine that in, in an industry like fashion, it's, it's always important to have friends. It's easy to imagine how friends in high places are important for a young designer just starting out when you get picked out of the crowd of new faces by somebody who can really make things happen for you. That's a kind of friendship that really, really counts for something at the start of a career. Because young designers are obviously brimming with talent and enthusiasm and ambition, somebody who's more seasoned, who knows the industry, can be an invaluable guide through a business that is incredibly complex. Somebody who knows the ropes comes along and tells them what they maybe should be doing or could be doing. You can see how that's the kind of friendship that's a huge advantage. First time I saw Christopher Kane's collections, um, I was struck by his originality and endless resources of new ideas. I think the speed with which he's coming up with new concepts and exploring new treatments, new fabric treatments, new ways of thinking about clothes um, is pretty impressive. We uh, started uh, carrying his collection very early on and um, and I would see him when we would be traveling to Milan or back and forth with him and Tammy and talk about you know maybe doing some special collections together and developing things. I believe a lot in creative visualization and in and also uh, in mentoring uh, young designers and, uh, and following your dream. And so I said, why don't you guys come in? Let's talk about what, what you see for yourselves as a business. And I remember I said, you know, where is this all going? You know, what kind of brand do you see yourselves as? And, and Christopher immediately said, oh, I see, this is big. This is going to be big and global. And I remember we had this really amazing, magical meeting that day. I mean, it was years ago. And I said, yeah, if you're going to go to where you're going, you need to map it out. And um, it's really great to, to see that going in the direction which he said it would be going into. I'm always very excited when I go to a show. As the, the looks come down the runway, I think about, oh, I want that for me, or I want that for Netta Porte. Um, and actually, one show that he did, um, I pulled a dress straight from the runway and wore it that night to number 10 Downing Street. And Kate Moss came up to me and said, no, where did you get that? It was just on the runway. And I said, well, it's Christopher Kane.
one kind of friend who really can be valuable is the friend with a high media profile who will wear your clothes and generate a lot of publicity for you. People who wear your clothes really determine the popular perception. You know when you have a friend who makes a record or a movie or something, you like to buy the record or buy a ticket, you, you want to support them. It's the same thing in fashion. It's important when there are faces that you associate with, with the uh, label, especially when they're faces that people love. In fashion, you look around, a lot of personal friendships have led to other things like charity work or foundations. That's when powerful friends are very, very useful. I think we're seeing more of that. We're seeing more of a sort of philanthropic activity now. You know, when people get into a position where they want to give something back, friendships are actually being turned into something that is meaningful in um, the wider world. It's a very special relationship for me because Frida is my partner in Time for Change. And we are also in the board of the Caring Foundation. So I, f I feel very, very close to Gucci. But I also love the clothes. It's always surprising, you know. It's always a little uh, pure, but with an ump. There's always a little bit of uh, flash, not flashy, but something unforgettable. You know, simple but unforgettable. For women of every shape and form, you can always find beautiful, exciting things. One of Thomas Meyer's most interesting achievements at Bottega Veneta has been his collaborations with artists on the advertising campaigns for the label. He has incredibly good taste in the photographers and artists he's chosen. It'll be a pretty serious exhibition one day when it makes it to the walls of a gallery or a museum. 
But Thomas Meyer's done a remarkable job of animating the brand by his collaborations with artists on the advertising campaigns that you see in magazines or online. He's really picked the cream of contemporary artists to make his vision of Bottega Veneta come to life using their vision. I think it's very stimulating for their collaborative partners when you have somebody who comes from somewhere else and gets to work on fashion projects, gets to shape fashion projects in tandem with the designer. I think everybody wins then. And I think at the end of it all, you get some very, very striking, provocative pictures. Fashion is necessarily collaborative, and I think some of the most interesting things we've seen over the past few decades have been collaborations between designers and people who aren't necessarily fashion people. What we're seeing with young designers now is, a, is an openness, a willingness to experiment. I think it's because kids now are soaking up so much from so many different directions. There's so much cultural input which they can uh, inject into their work, but it really helps if you have a sort of spirit guide, I think, taking you through all this stuff. And that's why, um, actually, I would say art directors maybe are unsung heroes and in the way that they work with um, designers to shape their vision. Alexander brought me in to help him reshape the image of the, of the house. Of course, my relationship with Bella Chega dates many years 
So I know the brand very well. I would say I'm the quiet person behind the scene, you know, trying to make sure everyone uh, and the teams are put together to really get the best image. Uh, I would say that uh, Alex brought a whole new, fresh, young aspect to the house. Uh, Avant-gardist, uh, sculptural, you know, risk-taking in terms of shape. I think there's more, you know, aspect of trying to do new forms, new texture, new imprint. Uh, and I think Balenciaga has always been at the forefront of that. So, well, I would look at the Balenciaga's work for me as a combination of a lot of, you know, aspects between the art and the, the exhibition work and all of the cinema work that I do. The, the loneliness of that woman in those images, you know, becomes, uh, you know, very graphic. And there, there's a certain realness that I like, and I feel like, you know, the millennial generation today, the all new generation of customer that we that are coming on the market are people that don't like tricks, don't like to be fooled. So there's an honesty to me about what those images show, you know. Yeah, of course, I'm influenced by, by all of it. Of course, the most obvious friendships in the fashion industry are the old friendships, the people who have come along with the designer as their career grows. We see a lot of loyalty. We see people who become affiliated with brands because they wear the same designers all the time. And I, I think that's kind of, it's a nice warm fuzzy moment that they want to, you know, they want to show that this is my friend, I like what she does. And those friendships inevitably include family. I think it's impossible to picture a Stella McCartney show without a front row full of friends and relatives. And it really has, I think, colored the way the world sees her shows, her business, and the way they, the way they see her, that she is the product of an environment, and that environment is right in front of you when you're at the shows. Words can't describe what it's like to walk in a stage show. She just wants to kind of let you be who you are. You know, all the Stella girls, you know, we all love Stella, and Stella loves us, and that's the nicest thing. 
It's always a good energy. It's amazing. I have a feeling it's always sunny outside when we have Stella. I think Stella has such an easy way and one of the things that I think women love about her is that she is this designer who actually designs for all parts of your life, not just the red carpet that you're occasionally on, but you know, your Saturday mornings and all hours of a woman's day. Eddie Slaman is first and foremost a fan. His passion for music and art and the work of Yves Saint Laurent have come together beautifully in his creative directorship at Saint Laurent. When you go to a, an Eddie Slaman show for the label, you are going to be educated in, in a way. You're going to hear music you've not heard before. You're going to find out about an artist you maybe haven't heard of before. Saman has put his own spin on these things and in a way it's a, a kind of alchemy. He manages to combine these elements into a new kind of gold for the label. When you go to a, one of Slaman's shows for Saint Laurent, you are instantly aware of how important music is to him. It's not just what you're hearing on the soundtrack, it's who you're seeing in the front row. It's who you're seeing in the ads. It's a wonderful collection of the coolest people in music. He's always been able to find, if not the next big thing, at least something which will register with you as ultra cool. The musicians that he uses in his campaigns are as changed by the experience as he is by working with them. That Saint Laurent look that he's offered the world, it's like purest rock and roll. It's brought a, a very new energy, I think, to the Paris fashion scene. I know that you notice my ways And I feel, I feel your gaze
There's another kind of old friend who's critically important, I think, and that's the friend who offers continuity um, over the years, who has been there in a personal and a professional capacity, who is a reminder of the authentic elements of a house. They also offer the, a continuity, a kind of aesthetic or philosophical continuity. Um, they're part of the, the DNA of, of the house. I think you see this a lot with hair and makeup teams. There's this kind of unspoken language that, that comes with years and years of, of friendship, years and years of talking over ideas. The fortunate side effect is that you get to stage these incredible shows on the runway. When it's really gelling and, and you're getting the contribution from, from the team and the team has been together for a long time, it just looks like the greatest gang in the world and you want to be in that gang. McQueen feels very close to me. I mean, I've been working for the house since 96 with Lee McQueen. Yeah, it just feels very like being at home when I work here. I instinctively know the DNA of the brands. The brand is very big now, but it feels very small behind the scenes. It still feels like a very sort of a gang of like young people, even though we're not so young anymore. But it feels like we're still sort of trying to push boundaries. And there's some sort of fun element to it as well. It's a very kind of unique kind of feeling backstage. Sarah brings me in quite early on to discuss her ideas and feelings for the show and then she's very happy for me to sort of add a design element. She's um, very respectful of me and I'm very respectful of her and it's a very sort of nice sort of collaboration. If I have a gut feeling about what the sort of head sort of uh, treatment should be, whether it be hair like today's show or some kind of thing we have to manufacture and I kind of help design, then she's very open to it because she knows I certainly want the best for the look for the show and understand the brand. When you're working with very creative people and they have a very strong vision, it really opens you up and it pushes your creativity. There's no boundaries of what you could create with hair and makeup. The, the support behind it is so important because creativity has to flow and it only flows when you feel comfortable. I mean, a little bit of stress is good and a little bit of anxiety, but you have to feel comfortable with the people around you. And Sarah really um, encourages every kind of creativity to pour out, which is fantastic.
Fashion can look like quite a big, intimidating business, I think, from the outside. It seems to be based on things that don't really connect with real life in, in so many ways. So I think it's very reassuring to find out that actually fashion sits on a foundation of human relationships. What you see on a catwalk is the designer's ideal vision for the season. I think it's important to remember that that vision is the result of collaborations. It's a side of fashion we don't always see, we don't always think about, but it is always there.